Chaksurun militanina Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namahom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Korabani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Dezatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri At Aita Gadadhar, Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 50. Lord Krishna erects the Dwarka fort. So we heard how Lord Krishna had gone to Mathura and he had killed Kamsa there. And after Kamsa's death, he had two wives. So his wives became widows, and apparently they had no older son to take care of them, so they had to go back to their father. So, for, for women, they have three stages in life. When they're young girls, they live with their father, protected by their father. And then when, they, when they're youthful, they get married to a young husband. And then if the husband dies, then they have to live under the protection of either their sons or they go back to their father. If the son is not grown up, if he's still a child, then he cannot protect them. So in that case also they would go back to their father. <laughs> So Kamsa had two queens. They were both daughters of Jarasandha. They were two sisters. One was called Asti and the other was Prapti. Pra Asti and Prapti. So their father was Jarasandha and he was the king of the Bihar province, which in that day it was called Magadha. So when the, the two girls came home and they told their father how Krishna had killed their husband, Kamsa, so Jarasandha became very angry. And Jarasandha made a vow. He said that since Krishna had killed Kamsa, he said Jarasandha said he would kill all the Yadu dynasty. 
แล้วเดลาสันดาเนี่ยหลังจากที่รู้ว่าคริชนาเนี่ยสังหารคำสาปเขาก็ประกาศว่าคริชนาเนี่ยบังอาจสังหารคำสาปฆ่านี่แหละจะเป็นคนสังหารทั้งราชวงศ์อย่าดูให้หมดสิ้น So at that time, all the Yadu dynasty, the most of them, they were living in Mathura. So Jarasandha made plans to go and attack Mathura. And he had a huge army. He had armies with many thousands of chariots and horses and elephants and soldiers. So Jarasandha actually had he had thirteen of these different armies, all full of. Elephants and horses and chariots and soldiers, and they all came to attack Mathura, to get revenge for the death of Kamsa. So Jarasandha came with his army. And they surrounded all of Mathura, all the directions of Mathura. They surrounded it. So it said Jarasandha's army was so big, it was like an ocean. Just like the ocean comes in, it can cover the beach. So the same way Jarasandha had an army could. Cover the whole of Mathura. So Lord Krishna saw how all the people in Mathura, they were very afraid because he saw the danger. This big army is going to attack them, and they want to kill everybody in the city. So Lord Krishna was had to he thought about his mission as a coming into this world as an incarnation coming into this world he thought what he should do. So he thought he didn't. He he was not interested. Krishna was not interested to conquer the kingdom of Magadha. So he didn't want to kill the king of Magadha, Jarasandha. He thought no point to kill the king because he didn't want to have to take care of the kingdom. Lord Krishna came into this world. One of the reasons why he came in this world was to stop all the. There were so many people, but especially Shatriyas on the planet. So Lord Krishna came to stop that and to remove all these Shatriyas. So Krishna decided that he would just. He would kill all the army of Jarasandha, but he wouldn't kill Jarasandha. And that way, after after he kills all the army of Jarasandha, then he will send Jarasandha back. He can go back and he can get another army, and they can come and attack again. So 
So just at that time, Lord Krishna was thinking at that way. So then Lord Krishna arranged two very beautiful chariots appeared from the sky. And these chariots were they had all they had drivers and weapons and all the paraphernalia. So Lord Krishna had his brother, his elder brother Balarama was with him. So Lord Krishna said to Lord Balaram, he said to Lord Balaram that you are the you are the protector of the Yadu dynasty. So just now the Yadu people of the Yadu dynasty they're very afraid because of all the soldiers of Jarasandha. <coughs> <coughs> so you have to give them protection. So your chariot is here with weapons. So I want you to sit on your chariot and then go and kill all these soldiers. <coughs> Now Lord Krishna told Lord Balaram that we have both come to this world in order to protect our pious devotees. So now we have the chance to do our duty, to, to take up our mission and to kill all, these, all this army of Jarasandha. So Krishna and Balaram got on their chariots and Krishna rode the chariot. Daruka is his driver, he's always Krishna's chariot driver. And they just had a small army, they had a very small army. They came out of the city. Mathura with a very small army, the two chariots, Krishna and Balaram, Daruka driving Krishna's chariot, and they just had a small army. They came out to confront this huge army of Jarasandha. <laughs> So Krishna came out with Balaram and they were blowing their conch shells and Jarasandha's army, although they had a huge army, much bigger than Krishna's army, but when they heard Krishna's conch shell, then their hearts were really shaken and they became afraid. And when Jarasandha saw Balaram and Krishna, he became a little bit compassionate because he remembered that they had their their relatives of his, and he's like their grandfather. They're like his grandsons. So when. Jarasandha sees Krishna, then he calls Krishna a bad name. He calls him Purush Adama. 
he means the lowest among men. So in the Vedas, in the scriptures, Krishna is Purushottama. He's the highest of men. But Jarasandha didn't want to call him that. But the great Acharyas and the great devotees, they tell us that when Jarasandha called Krishna Parush Adama, it means one who makes all other personalities go down. Means that Krishna is above everyone, and nobody can be equal to or greater than Krishna. So Jarasandha said to Krishna that I'm not going to fight with boys like Krishna and Balaram. It's not very good for me to fight with these young, because they're just like young children compared to me. And Krishna had already killed Kamsa, who, so, so Kamsa was like, he was a relative of Lord Krishna, he was their uncle. So Jarasandha says to Krishna that you kill your own relatives. Actually, Kamsa, he had killed many of his own nephews, but Jarasandha didn't mention that. But because Krishna killed his uncle Kamsa, then Jarasandha was criticizing him. So people who are demons, they always find their own, they, they do not see their own faults, they only find faults of other people. So Jarasandha then also criticized Krishna. He said, you're not even a Kshatriya. No, because Krishna was brought up in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj is not a Kshatriya, he's a Vaishya. Haribo? Archana? Archana? What happened? You got disconnected again. You, what's going on there? Oh, it just happened, Guru Maharaj. I don't know, my... Maharaj, now it's okay? Yeah, now it's okay, but for a, a minute or more, there was no sound there. Did you, uh, did you touch something? Nothing, Guru Maharaj. Well, so, something wrong with your internet connection there. Every time it So people who are, Nanda Maharaj was a Vaishya and Krishna was brought up in the family of Nanda Maharaj. 
แต่ว่านันดมาราชเนี่ยเป็นเป็นวัยชาแล้วก็กระชันเนี่ยถูกเลี้ยงดูมาจากบ้านของวัยชา So sometimes the Vaishyas they are given the name Gupta, but the Gupta also means something which is hidden. So Krishna had been hiding, and he was also brought up by Nanda Maharaj. So Jarasandha accused Krishna of three faults. First of all, he killed his own uncle. And then he was not even a Kshatriya. And in his childhood, he'd been hiding. So Jarasandha felt ashamed to fight with Krishna. So then Jarasandha spoke to Balaram, and he said to He said to Balaram, "If you like, you can fight along with him, along with Krishna." And Jarasandha, Jarasandha says to Lord Balaram, "He said, 'And if you are patient, then just wait, and you can be killed by my arrows.'" And then when you're killed by my arrows, then you can be you go to heaven. Right. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, a Shatriya can benefit two ways when fighting. Right. Either if he wins the fight, if he wins the fight, then he enjoys the kingdom. And if he's killed, then he goes to heaven. So, Jarasandha was thinking he was so smart, but Krishna said to Jarasandha, he said, "You talk too much. Heroes don't speak so much." The real hero will show their strength. They will show their fight, their their courage in fighting. But you talk a lot, so it seems like you you think you're going you 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 know you're going to die in this battle. So Lord Krishna said to Jarasandha, "We don't care to hear you anymore." It is useless to hear the words of somebody who is going to die. So, in order to fight with Krishna, Jarasandha had his army all round the, covering all round the whole of Mathura. And Krishna is like the sun. 
and it appeared like he was covered by clouds. Just, and that was actually, the clouds were the, the army of Jarasandha. Krishna's chariot has the picture of Garuda on the flag and Balaram's chariot has palm tree on it. And the, the ladies of Mathura are all great devotees and they love Krishna very much. So they stood on the top of their houses and they were in their pa on top, up on the top of their palaces and they wanted to see the fight. But Krishna's chariot, Krishna only had one chariot and a small army. They, they couldn't see Krishna. He was covered by all the Jarasandha's army. So some of the ladies are very worried about Krishna and some of them even fainted. So Krishna saw the situation, so he picked up his bow. Krishna has a famous bow, it's called Saranga. So Krishna picked up his bow and took his arrows and one after another, then he shot them towards the enemy. So Krishna's arrows were so accurate that all the army of Jarasandha was quickly killed. All the elephants and horses and the soldiers, they were all killed. So Krishna was firing their arrows, all the horses fell, the chariots broke apart, the elephants also were killed, they all fell down and everywhere there was just a river of blood everywhere. Yeah, thousands of elephants and horses and men were killed, so the blood flowed just like a river. And in the river, you could see arms had been cut off from people and the arms were, they looked like snakes in the river. And some people's heads had been cut off, their heads were floating in the river, they looked like tortoises. And the dead bodies of elephants, they were like islands, little islands. And the dead bodies of elephants, they were like islands, little islands. 
กาะเล็กๆ and the, the the dead horses they look like sharks แล้วก็ศพม้าเนี่ยเหมือนกับปลาฉลาด so all the hands and the legs of the soldiers they floated just like fish in the in in the river And the hair, the hair from the heads of the soldiers, was like seaweed. And the 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 soldiers had bows. Their bows were like waves of the river. So all the jewelry from the bodies of the soldiers and the, all the people who had been uh, fighting, all the jewelry and they they were like small stones that which lay on the on the the river bed. แล้วก็เครื่องประดับของของทหารทั้งหมดเนี่ยที่มาเนี่ยมันก็ลอยไปนะมันก็เปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นเหมือนกับอพอเพชรพลอยเนี่ยมันก็ลอยอยู่บนสายน้ำที่เป็นเลือด so Lord Balaram he was he was also fighting and he was using his club and he was also killing a lot of people People were appreciating the courage of the two brothers, Krishna and Balaram, that they were great heroes. But there were cowards also. People who were cowardly, they were very afraid because it was such a horrible scene. So Jarasandha had come with a big army, but Krishna and Balaram had completely defeated them. But this is the pastime of the supreme personality of Godhead. Unless we understand the potency of Lord Krishna. Then we will be bewildered. We will not be able to understand the pastimes of Krishna. Lord, Lord Krishna, he creates and he maintains and he can dissolve the whole material world simply by his will. So it's not very difficult for Krishna to defeat a big army when they come. But Krishna and Balaram, they were fighting with Jarasandha. Just like they were ordinary humans. So when all the soldiers of Jarasandha had been killed, there was only Jarasandha left alive. And so Jarasandha felt very depressed that all of his army had been taken, been killed. But Balaram came there, and Balaram brought ropes, and he began to tie up Jarasandha, make him a prisoner. 
แล้วก็หลังจากที่ไม่เหลือใครแล้วเนี่ยเขาก็ต่อสู้กับยาสันดาลและสุดท้ายยาสันดาก็ถูกจับตัวแล้วก็ถูกมัดบาลารามก็ไปมัดเขาไป But when Balaram was doing that, Krishna came and he told Lord Balaram, "No, no, don't tie him up. Don't do that. Let him go." Because Krishna has a greater plan. He, Krishna wants Jarasandha to go back and get another army and come and fight again. เพราะว่าคริสต์นาเนี่ยมีแผนแผนของพระองค์ก็คือจะให้จารสันดานเนี่ยกลับไปแล้วก็ทหารกองทัพทหารมาอีกแล้วก็จะจะสังหารพวกนั้น And this way Lord Krishna can reduce the burden of all these demonic shatrias who've come on the planet เพื่อที่พระองค์เนี่ยจะสามารถสังหารพวกกษัตริย์ที่ไม่มีธรรมะเนี่ยให้หมดไปจากส่วนพันธุ์ในโลกได้ So Krishna told Balaram, "Don't tie him up. Let him go back. Let him go free." So Jarasandha felt very ashamed that he had been defeated and treated like that. And he thought, Jarasandha thought, "I'm not worthy to be a king." I'm going to go now. I'm going to go to the forest and just meditate and do austerities and penances because I'm not worthy to be a king. So when he was leaving, he was going home. But there were some of the old friends there, and they told him, "Oh no, no, don't retire." They told him, they told Jarasana, "This was just your bad karma. You try again. We think next time you fight, you can defeat Krishna." <laughs> They told Jarasandha usually it would not was not possible for Krishna to defeat you. So it must have just been bad luck that you got defeated this time. But if you try, if you try again, I think we think you can win. อันนี้มันน่าจะเป็นกรรมไม่ดีของเธอมากกว่าเลยทำให้เธอแบบว่าแพ้อย่างนี้มันน่าจะเป็นดวงไม่ดีมากกว่ามันเป็นความโชคดีของเขาไปไม่เป็นไรเอาใหม่ละกัน And they told Jarasandha, you're really a hero, you're a great fighter, so you shouldn't take this defeat very bad. แล้วก็ทุกคนก็บอกว่าจารสันดาเธอเป็นวีรบุรุษผู้ยิ่งใหญ่เธอไม่ควรที่จะรู้สึกหมดกำลังใจเร็วมากขนาดนี้อย่าขอแพ้เร็วขนาดนี้ No, there was no fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It was just bad luck that you got defeated. And so, Jarasandha, he'd, he'd, he'd been defeated and he'd been insulted, and then he, he got arrested, and then they let him go. So it was a big disgrace. And so anyway, Jarasandha went back to his kingdom. And Krishna, he defeated all this army of Jarasandha. And although Krishna had a tiny army, not one single soldier on Krishna's army got injured. But all of Jarasandha's army was killed. 
แต่ว่าทหารของจราสันดาทั้งหมดเนี่ยถูกสังหาร So the demigods in heaven, they were very pleased, and they they praised Lord Krishna. And they showered flowers on top of Lord Krishna. And Jarasandha, he went back to his kingdom. And it appeared that Mathura was safe. So the the people of Mathura they organized a big festival. And they had professional singers come to sing songs, and they had poets to write nice poetry. And they all praised the victory of Lord Krishna. And there was, there was wonderful music. People blew conch shells and they blew bugles. All kinds of instruments were played, madangas and everything made a wonderful reception for Krishna. Uh, and the whole city was clean, and all the roads and streets were sprinkled with water, and everybody was very happy. Everyone decorated their houses with flags and flowers. And the, the brahmanas would chant Vedic mantras. There were groups of brahmanas chanting different mantras. And then the ladies and girls of Mathura. They were making nice flower garlands. And they took yogurt and mixed it with fresh green grass, and they put it everywhere to make a nice auspicious reception for Krishna. And all the ladies and the women, they all were very, they were very much happy with Lord Krishna, and they looked with love on Lord Krishna. And Krishna and Balaram, they brought many ornaments and jewels, and they brought many different things from the battlefield, and they presented it to King Ugrasena. Ugrasena is the grandfather of Krishna, and he was like the the ruler of Mathura. And he is the king of he is the king of the Yadu dynasty. However, Jarasandha. He came back and attacked Krishna again. He came back. He didn't just attack Mathura one time, but.
but he attacked Mathura 17 times. And each time Jarasandha came with a huge army, and each time he was defeated, and all his soldiers were killed by Krishna. So every time he went home, very disappointed. And each time Jarasandha would get arrested and then they would insult him and then they would release him and send him home. But when Jarasandha was coming for the 18th time, at this time, there was a Yavna king who also came with a huge army. This Yavna king had heard about the opulence of the Yadu dynasty, so he came with a big army to attack the city of Mathura. The, the king of the Yavanas, this king of the Yavanas was called Kala Yavana. And they, some people say that Narada Muni told him that he should attack Mathura. And there, there, was a, there was a pastime that Gargamuni, Gargamuni is the priest of the Yadu dynasty, that he got insulted by his brother-in-law. And when the kings of the Yadu dynasty heard how Gargamuni had been insulted, then they laughed about Gargamuni. And this made Gargamuni very angry at the Yadus. So Gargamuni decided he would produce a, a, a child who would be very fearful to the Yadu dynasty. So Gargamuni did some austerity and he pleased Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva gave him the benediction of a son. Yes, the child was Kala Yavna. The child he begot, he but he get, this child was born in the womb of a, a Yav, the wife of a Yavna king. So this Kab, this Kala Yavana asked Narada Muni, who are the most powerful kings in the world? And Narada Muni told him the Yadus are the most powerful. So Kala Yavana came to attack the city of Mathura, but he, ta he came there at the same time Jarasandha came to attack it for the 18th time. 
แต่ว่าเมื่อได้รับข้อมูลเช่นนี้แล้วเนี่ยสุดท้ายเขาก็เลยรู้สึกใหญ่จะโจมตีเมืองมัตคุรา่าในขณะเดียวกันกับที่จาราจาราสัมนาเนี่ยก็พยายามโจมตีเป็นครั้งที่สิบแปด So Kalyavana was looking for someone who could give him a good fight, but he could not find anyone strong enough. So then he heard about Mathura, and he came there, and he, he brought an army, thirty million Yavana soldiers. <laughs> so, thirty million soldiers. They were all surrounding Mathura. So, Krishna thought what to do. And there, there's two armies: is Jarasandha's army and Kalayavana's army. So Kalayavana began to attack Mathura, and Jarasandha. They thought he's coming in a day or two. He's coming just after behind Kalayavana. So Krishna knew Jarasandha would take this opportunity to try to capture Mathura. So Krishna has to make plans to protect all the people in Mathura. Because if Krishna and Balaram fight with Kalayavana in one place, then Jarasandha can go another way, and he can attack the city and take all the family of the Yadu people, take them all prisoners. And Jarasandha has already been defeated seventeen times, so he may want to get revenge and kill all the people of the Yadus. So Krishna decided to make a fort where no man or demon could enter. So he, Krishna arranged, put all his relatives there so that they would be safe, and he doesn't have to worry about them. So Prabhupada explains, he said, in the past, Dwarka was a part of the kingdom of Mathura. But Krishna arranged to construct this fort of Dwarka, he constructed it in the middle of the sea. Mm. 
And so he made a big wall around the fort in the middle of the sea. And it was a very wonderful place. It was constructed by Vishwakarma, who is the architect of the demigods. So not easy to put a fort in the middle of the sea. But Vishwakarma, because he's a demigod, he can do these things. Just like we see planets, big planets, they float in space. So, if a big planet can float in space, then also they can make a fort in the middle of the sea. So within that fort there was everything. There was roads and there were palaces and there were parks and gardens and there were desire trees kalpa briksha trees and there were parajata flowers from the heavenly planets everything was very special so there were big gates and gopurams to enter into the palace. The palaces were like skyscrapers. And then each and every house in the basement there were big golden and silver pots with all grains there. And the different rooms were also filled with golden water pots. And the, bed, the bedrooms were, they were covered with jewels. And there were Vishnu deities in every house. And there were all the different ashrams. They had the Brahmins and the Kshatriya, the Vaishya, the Sudra. They were all there in the city. So when, when Indra saw that Krishna was making a nice city, then Indra sent the Parajata tree from heaven. He gave it as a present to Krishna. And he, he gave Krishna also a special house, a Sudharma assembly house, like a parliament house. And the nature of that place was that anybody who went there, they wouldn't get influenced by old age or disease. And 
ความเอ่อความแก่อะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็โรคภัยไข้เจ็บ And then the demigod Varuna, he brought a present. He gave a, a horse that was all white except for black ears, and it could run at the speed of the mind. And Kuvera, he gave the eight perfections of material opulence. Kuvera, เนี่ย or เหรัญญิกของเราเทวดาเนี่ยก็ถวายศิลปะแห่งการบรรลุถึงความสมบูรณ์แปดระดับในความมั่งคั่งทางวัตถุ So there are thirty-three million demigods, and they each gave their different gifts to Lord Krishna. จะมีเหล่าเทวดาทั้งหมดสามสามล้านองค์เพราะฉะนั้นพวกท่านเนี่ยก็ให้ก็ทุกต่างคนต่างก็ให้ของขวัญคริสต์าตามระดับศักยภาพของตน They all want to make an offering to Krishna to make Dwarka a very special place. ทุกคนเนี่ยก็อยากจะถวายให้กับคริสต์าแล้วก็ทำเมืองดวาร์กาเนี่ยให้เป็นเมืองที่พิเศษของมัน And we see all the demigods there. They are servants of Krishna, and they respect Lord Krishna as their master. So when the new when the city was all ready, then Krishna transferred all the people from Mathura. And he made Lord Balaram the father of the city. And then Krishna came back to Mathura, and he came to meet Kalayavana. So that's the end of the chapter. We'll hear what happens, how Krishna meets Kalayavana, and what happens. All right. So, are there any questions? So, Dwarka, the city of Dwarka, it's. In under the sea now, it's it. It was a, in Krishna's time. It was on in the sea, but not under the sea. But now it's under the sea. ตอนสมัยคริสต์นาเนี่ยก็คือเป็นเมืองที่ถูกสร้างไว้ตรงกลางทะเลแต่ว่าตอนนี้ก็ถ้ายืนยันอยู่แล้วทุกคนก็ทำได้จริงๆแต่แต่ว่าเมืองนี้เนี่ยปัจจุบันเนี่ยอยู่ภายใต้น้ำภายอยู่ภายใต้ Uh, Nam okay. Okay. Yes, Pramash. There is a question from Yogita. Yes, Yogita. Hi, Krishna Gurudev. Please accept humble obeisances. Gurudev. Hi, Krishna. Good. If I want to ask about Daruka, Lord Krishna's chariot driver, he he seems so very fortunate to me. Good. If I mean, he must have seen so many things not even predictable by us that we've only heard about in the shastras, or from you, and from Shri Prabhat. I mean, even though Lord Krishna went to Indra Loka to fight with Devendra. Taking Satya Brahma, I mean, so many things he must have seen. Lord Krishna performing his, oh, Govinda, it's amazing. Was he someone special in his uh, previous life that he took that role of the chariot driver of Lord Krishna? Well, everyone in Krishna's pastimes is special. Don't think anybody is ordinary. Even d r i t a r a s t r a and Duryodhan, they're special. They're not ordinary people. 
Mm. However, yeah. Lord, Lord Krishna didn't always take Daruka with him. It's not like, like when Lord Krishna went to get the Brahmana's sons back. This yeah. the Brahmana Dwarka, his wife was having miscarriages. So Lord Krishna took Arjuna. The, the, Daruka wasn't driving the chariot then. Oh, okay. So okay. not not every time Daruka is driving, but usually, you know, yeah, he's mm -hmm. that's his service. He's in Dasharas, right? That's Dasharas. Oh. He's a servant. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. Right. Wow, I just, I don't know, Kuntiv, I just feel like paying obeisance is again and again to him. He's so fortunate to be there and see the Lord personally do so many things. It's yeah. just... Yeah, he's a Dwarka, he's a resident of the Dwarka, Dwarka Vasi. Uh, so, yeah, the Dwarka Vasis, uh, they, have, wow. they have that relationship with Lord Krishna. Mm. Uh, but Krishna has servants in Vrindavan and Braja. Krishna has servants there, Raktak, Patrak. They're his servants mm -hmm. there. In the home of Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, there are servants there. Yeah, Gurudev 17, I can't remember her name. Taka, I don't know, um, that uh, she was. Um, Mother Yashoda's servant, and she used to look after all the butter pots. And once uh, Lord Krishna was going, and uh, she made sure that nobody touched any pot. And Lord Krishna was so scared of her. When I read that, Gurudev, I was just so amazed. I can't imagine Lord of the Universe, Lord of Three Worlds, existence, being scared of somebody who was hired by Mother Yashoda. It's really unpredictable, Gurudev. So much well, joy and grief. That's Lord Krishna's lila, that he enjoys these pastimes, being, you know, he plays the part. He's afraid, just like he was afraid of Mother Yashoda. When Mother Yashoda came with her, her, her stick for churning the yogurt, for churning yeah. the butter, Lord Krishna was afraid. He was trembling, with tears in his eyes. Mother Yashoda yeah. was coming, chase, and he was running, and Mother Yashoda was chasing him, he was afraid. Mm -hmm. Right? That's Damodar Leela also. Yeah. It's just really, truly very amazing. There are many pastimes <laughs> like that. And Krishna, you know, he's a, a wonderful actor, and he plays the parts <laughs> very nicely, just like after he killed Kamsa and he freed Mother Yasho, Mother Devaki and Vasudev from the jail and then he apologizes to them that I'm sorry I couldn't serve you very well. I was uh, separated from you. And I was in Vrind Vrindavan in the home of Nanda Maharaj and I couldn't take care of you well. So mm. Krishna says like that. Krishna is very humble and he plays all, he enjoys being subordinate and being under his devotees. He likes his devotees to be superior, to be above him, to order him. To <laughs> Good thing. One more thing it reminds me, um, Lord Krishna, only, only when he's in Vrindavan Dham, he plays all the leelas, I mean, all the characters, right? But uh, being in Mathura, in Dwarka, still, what he, they were playing until Vatsalya Rasa, right? Because he was still uh, showing love and uh, servitude to his mother and father, even over there in Dwarka. So I was wondering, is it? Well, that's well, the nature of Dwar in Dwarka. It's only a, a little different from Vaikuntha that is, there's, there's, you, you don't get the, the, the lilas like what you get in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan you get the Madhurya lila more, but yeah, in Dwarka yeah. you're not going to get that same. 
you know. Mm. Mm. Vasudev and Devaki, their relationship with Krishna is not like mm. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. Mm. 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 They're, okay. they're from Dwarka, they're residents in Dwarka. Mm. Gurudev, Dwarka has only Tilvatsalya Ras, right? No Sakya Ras and Madhurya Ras, right? Well, there is some Sakya Ras because Vidura to some extent is Sakya Ras with Krishna, but not like the cowherd uh -huh. boys. It, okay. not, he's not equal, he won't sit on the same level as Krishna. Mm. And Uddhava, would he ever sit on the same level as Lord Krishna? No. No. Mm. Uddhava was also Dasya Ras, right? Was, he was... Uddhava is some Sakya Ras, but it's Mixed. not like the cowherd boys. It's Sakya okay. Ras with, with proper respect and reverence mm. for Krishna. Ah, okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Thank you. Okay. Shaya has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanava Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sila Bhagavan. Ajanaha, in time of being referred to class Ishopanishad, Naha, and in the Kita Bhattisi Pok, Naha. สโลกที่สิบเจ็ดถึงสิบแปดอ่าวันนี้เราเรียนกันว่าคำถามของพี่ถ้ามายาวดีอะค่ะที่เขาเหมือนตั้งตัวเองที่มีศาสนาเหม
ราก็สามารถไปในบรมโยติได้ที่เหนือขึ้นไปอีกนั่นก็คือถ้าเกิดเขาแบบไม่มีอะไรทางไม่มีความยึดติดอะไรทางวัตถุแล้วเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้ไปในโลกที่เหนือไประดับความวัตถุนี้ขึ้นไปสูงกว่านี้So impersonal liberation is, is just like being in space. You know, you, you just you just you have nowhere to go. You're just left in a, the in the in the light, and you have no. There's no variety. There's no relationship. You're just in the the, the stage of the impersonal Brahman. มันเป็นแบบว่ามันเป็นพื้นที่ว่างเปล่าซึ่งจะไม่มีความสัมพันธ์อะไรกับใครแล้วก็มันจะเป็นแบบว่าจะแบบว่าอยู่ไปกับกลืนไปกับสิ่งนั้นอยู่ไปกับสิ่งเดียว There's nothing to do ไม่มีอะไรให้ทำมา There's no activity There's no relationship Nothing Just the oneness of Brahman Everything is Brahman, light, the light. But to enter into that oneness, you have to be free of all material desires. That's not easy. It's a lot of struggle. People have to work very hard to get that kind of liberation. And the demons who Krishna kills, they get that liberation. The demons who Krishna kills on the battle of Kurukshetra and all like that, they all get that kind of liberation. But a devotee will never take that kind of liberation. Because a devotee knows there's no way to do devotional service there. So that's a problem. You want to get that impersonal liberation. The There's just nothing. There's no, there's no real pleasure there. So devotees not interested in that kind of liberation. It's hellish. For a devotee. Impersonal liberation. We call it sayujya mukti, or merging into the oneness of the Brahman. Devotee wants devotional service. He doesn't care whether he's in the material world or the spiritual world. He just wants devotional service. It doesn't matter where he does the service, whether you're in the material world or heaven or hell or in the spiritual world. It's all the same to the devotee. 
ที่ไหนก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยมันเหมือนกันไม่ว่าจะเป็นการรับใช้หน้าที่โลกทิพย์หรือการรับใช้พระองค์ที่เอาวัตถุเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยจะสําหรับเสาเนี่ยจะมีจะแบบว่ามีความเขาจะเหมือนกันเหมือนกันสําหรับเขาในการได้รับใช้ So Lord Chaitanya teaches us like that. He said, "All I want is devotional service, birth after birth." Lord Chaitanya said, "I don't want wealth, and I don't want followers, and I don't want to be praised." I just want devotional service, birth after birth. Only devotional service can actually satisfy the soul. Nothing else is going to satisfy the soul. So we always pray to be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. Birth after birth. We don't care where it is. We just want to be engaged in Krishna's service. All right. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have more question. Uh, Ajana ha. Yang ni, thakar ba. Uh, tam thi lao. Kuki kari, man kaba. Thakar ba. Sawok pu thi yang ma dei pati pat pat yang serious ne ha. Tai yang man kaba. Uh, enjoy ne material alai pu ne ha. แล้วคือในเหมือนกับในปากวัตคีตาสอนพูดว่าเหมือนกับว่าเรากลับมาเกิดในโลกวัตถุนี้อีกแต่ว่าพี่เคยเหมือนกับได้ยินคนอื่นพูดว่าเราจะมีโอกาสเหมือนกับว่าถ้าซาวโวประเภทเนี้ยไปอยู่ที่เหมือนแบบไฮเออร์แพลเนตอะแล้วก็เหมือนไปแพ็กทีสที่นั่นเพื่อจะกลับไปโลกามันจะมีความเต็มไปได้ไหมคะเข้าใจพี่ไหมถ้าไม่ได้กลับมาเข้าใจพี่ไม่อ่ะพี่ไม่แน่ใจขอบคุณค่ะ She uh, she said that is that her understanding is right or not? She understand that if the devotee who who is uh, be ready uh, who is performing devotional service but not uh, free from, ยังไม่เป็นอิสระจากความต้องการทางวัตถุหรอคะหรือว่าไงใช่ค่ะใช่ค่ะอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็มันก็ว่ายังยังไม่เพียวอะอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วเหมือนว่ามันยังไม่ถึงที่ก็เราจะกลับโกโลกเราจะมีสิทธิ์แบบไปไฮเออร์แพลเน็ตไหมแล้วก็ไปแพ็กทีสต์ต่ออะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเข้าใจอ่าเพื่อจะขึ้นไปโลกอีกทีโอเคขอบคุณค่ะโอเคเอ่อ so for those devotees who still have material desire so for them they might not go back to Godhead immediately after their death but will they get a chance in a next life to perform more Uh, pure devotional service and train themselves to go back to Godhead. Oh yes. Is that yes, they will get the chance. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the sixth chapter, Lord Krishna describes that if the devotee is not fully successful in this life, then the next life they will take birth in the family of devotees, so that from the beginning of life they have the opportunity. To take up devotional service. ในปกติตาก็ได้บอกไว้อย่างชัดเจนค่ะว่าสําหรับบุคคลที่ไม่ได้มาทําแบบว่าได้ไม่ประสบความสําเร็จในชาตินี้เนี่ยยังยังไงเนี่ยชาติหน้าเขาจะได้โอกาสที่จะเอ่อได้เ
ปฏิบัติเขาจะได้เกิดในครอบครัวที่แบบว่าง่ายแล้วก็ในครอบครัวที่เป็นสาวกเฟอร์ให้เขาเนี่ยสามารถได้กลับไปหาเจ้าได้ง่ายขึ้น And some people they may take birth in a rich family so that they have all material facilities to help it make it easier for them to take up Krishna consciousness. แล้วก็สําหรับบางคนเนี่ยก็จะจะได้เกิดในครอบครัวที่มีความร่ํารวยแล้วก็มันจะได้เป็นการง่ายในการปฏิบัติของเขาในชาติต่อไปโอเคอ
have to understand the different mood between Vrindavan and Math uh, Mathura and Dwarka. We say P Krishna is perfect in Dwarka, he is more perfect in Mathura and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. So in Vrindavan, all of the rasas are there. Everything is there, but it's mixed, it's all mixed with Madhurya. But Vaik Dwarka is different. Vaikuntha and Dwarka, this, Mathura, these places, it's more Dasharas and Sakyaras, little Sakyaras, but more Dasharas, servant. Yes, so the pastimes of Krishna are more confidential. Krishna in Vrindavan is very confidential pastimes. You would see Srimad Bhagavatam is more about Vishnu and then Krishna comes in the tenth canto after a lot of purification, then we get to hear about Krishna. So that you see like the, the Sri Vaishnavas, the Sri Vaishnavas, they worship Krishna, they worship Vishnu and they worship the different avatars of Vishnu and they worship Krishna as the avatar of Vishnu and they say Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Krishna as the avatar and they don't, they won't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and they won't accept Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You see? But still they are Vaishnavas and they have the mood of that the, the, they are servants to the Supreme Lord and they say the Supreme Lord is Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Now I understand. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Very wonderful uh, pastime today. Thank you so much. Okay. So we'll stop here tonight. I think there's no more questions, are there? Yes, Guru. No more. Of course, you know, one ask all the devotees, you know, the Kripa Maya Matijis in, in hospital in Bangkok, I hear? Yes, Guru Maharaj, she is in ICU. Yeah, she's, so we ask all the devotees, offer prayers for Kripa Maya Mataji that she can recover, get yes, herself Krishna. back. Mm -hmm. I saw to contract and pray, hey Mother Dira and Aha, then I you, I see you, my father. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Vrinda ki jai. Mm -hmm.